Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, oh, oh goodness. Oh my goodness. So I discovered you when, when you were here in May. I was here in the hot seat and I had discovered you literally less than 24 hours before I was in the hot seat. So I found you on YouTube and then within 24 hours I was in the hot seat. You happen to be in my backyard. So that was amazing. I think I failed miserably since I've been here. <laughs> I, I've got to say. Um, clunk, clunk. Clunk, yeah, clunk. I have listened to you, and I have come so far since May. Thank you so much, Abraham and Esther, for putting these online for us. Yeah. Because it is a great, great gift. It's a great gift, and it's gotten me through a lot. Now, we're just going to play with you for a little bit, and we are going to hear you fully. Sure. But given what we just explained, can you hear the engines that she's sending that way and the engines that she's sending this way? I found you. I failed miserably. And, of course, that isn't true, but still. Right, because it's never done. It's never done, but still, we don't want you to be guarded of your language, but we want you to be aware of the things that you're saying that are helping you and the things that you're saying that aren't helping you. Yeah. And pointing out what isn't working or what yes. is not helping. Yes, and it's, it's a process. It's really something that I think I'll have to learn the rest of my life, you know, just every day, every day, every day. It's a process, but of course it's a process. And the label of the process would be being aware when I'm shooting myself in the foot. Yeah. Because if you're not shooting yourself in the foot, it's like the cork floats, that's alignment. You can hold it under the water, that's resistance, but when you let go, the cork will float. So you don't have to work hard at saying the right thing. You don't have to work hard. Just try to hold back a little bit on the conversation and the attention on the unwanted things. That's our soft guidance to you. Thank right. you. Thank you. And you went easy on me last time because I was new, so, but I've studied so much since, so um, I'm ready. <laughs> And when I was here last time, I went through a terrible breakup. Clunk, 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 clunk. I know. Now, why, what we're really wanting you to hear is, why talk about that? So here you are, visiting with infinite intelligence. You've got a vortex full of things that you want, someone who can guide you right to them. And instead, you're talking about stuff that won't let you move in the direction of what you want. Okay. And the reason that you're doing it, everyone understands it, everyone does it. Esther does it too sometimes. But we don't let any of you off the hook about it because as you are focusing upon any of that, you're holding yourself in resistance to what you really want. It's just that simple. And the more important thing is that you're keeping active a vibration that makes it more likely to do it again and to do it again and to do it again. Oh, yeah. So did you hear us a little bit? Yes, ago? absolutely. It was when we said to you that here you stand in your powerful now. Now matters so much. We're going to give something to you that is very blunt and sure. Your inner being never looks back. So your inner being isn't looking back to a bad breakup. Your inner being isn't looking back there. So when you do, you disconnect from your inner being. It's just that simple. Your inner being is not looking back. Your inner being is only looking forward. So your inner being is looking forward with you toward all of the wonderful things that are coming to you. Yes, because of that breakup, because that breakup, those bad experiences are what caused you to put good stuff in your vortex. But look at what you put in your vortex, not the reason that you put it in your vortex. So yeah. what's going on here, and don't feel bad about it, everybody does it, you're standing in a place not yet having manifested or received or realized the things that you really want. And so there's still this sort of justifying, it's a sort of human tendency. I need to explain to you why I'm not quite doing better. I need to explain to you where I've come from. But every time you explain where you've come from, you go back there and you assume that vibrational posture, yes. which is resistance to where you want to go. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so then how do I tell you what my problem is? <laughs> well... Here's the question that we have for you. So do you think that when you know you have a problem, that you know the solution that you're looking for? Can you feel the difference between talking about the problem and looking for the solution? Yes. Without justifying needing the solution 
by activating the problem. You see, that's the thing. If you need to activate the problem in order to justify or defend the reason for the solution, then you're in deep doo-doo because you're putting energy in both directions and you move nowhere. Mm -hmm. And no one can sort it out for you, but you. It's the releasing of the resistance that causes you to move toward what you're wanting. There's a vibrational variance between a solution and a problem. There's a vibrational variance between a question and an answer. So it's just focusing more in the direction of what you want without explaining too much where you've come from. It's like saying, I want to go high up on that house or on that silo or on that mountain, but first I'm going to dig a really deep hole and I'm going to get in it and then I'm going to climb out of the hole and then I'll start climbing up. Yeah. And we say, or you could just start where you are, <laughs> save yourself the trouble of all that digging. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because that digging stinks. Okay, so I'm not going to dig. So I... So just ask a straightforward question. I... You can, can't you? Can, can you? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I can. I mean, I tried to do the focus wheels, and I can't get the hang of them. And I started with, like, I love mozzarella sticks. We're not asking you to do a focus wheel. We're just asking you to come and tell us what you want. Okay. Not okay. what you don't want. Not how it okay. hasn't worked. Just tell us what you want. So I do, I want, see, this is the problem. I'm not even no. positive anymore. No. no, there isn't a problem. Oh, okay. There's only you with a little distance between where you are and where you want to be. But can you turn to where you want to be and just describe where you want to be? Yes. yes. Just describe where you want to be. I want to be happy. I might want to be back with my ex-boyfriend or have the right person come to me. I'm a little split now. I'm not sure, but I think that I'd like to just have the choice, you know, to have him come back. Now, you know that we want to climb your tree over that. <laughs> so can you say that in a less resistant way? And the way you do that is by getting general. I really like to be in a relationship. I really like someone to focus upon. I really like to love. I really like to have someone to do things for. I really like someone looking back at me and loving me. I love the idea of being with someone and having this mutual appreciation for each other. That's all clear, that's all pure, there's no resistance in any of that, and you want every bit of that. But it's hard for you to say that because you're all wrapped up in what you don't want. I'm so wrapped So up. you have to stay <laughs> off that subject altogether. This is the thing that we really want you to hear. Since you've already ask not just in your words here but you've been asking for a long time your life experience caused you to ask so there's a very strong asking that your inner being is hearing and your inner being knows exactly how to get you from where you are to all of that but every time you tell the story of where you've been or how you feel then it just puts a smoke screen up that makes it impossible for you to hear or for you to follow any of the guidance that your inner being is giving you you can't even hear us and don't feel bad about it. Everybody gets that. When you feel like you're feeling, you just can't get there. So let's say there are five things you want and four of them are working great, but this one, not so much. If you could focus on any one of the four things that are working, that one would come into alignment. Or you can focus upon the one that isn't working and mess up the other four. Anything you're focused upon is either opening or closing your switch of alignment to the clarity that you want. Look at it that way. Whatever you're focused upon is really flipping the switch of whether you're in a place where you can hear or where you're in a place where you can't hear. And then I try to go to work and I hate my job. So I been thinking of that all day. Like I, I dislike my job very much. So it's like, not like I can escape the heartbreak. And then I go to my job and I'm like, I try to make it wonderful. No, you don't. Well, you didn't try just now, at least. Yeah, no, words, I, it's said, so You said, I hate my job. You said, I hate my job. I shouldn't say that word. Well, it doesn't matter whether you say it or not. The universe isn't responding to your words. It's, yeah. The universe is responding to how you feel. So, two down, how many have we got to go? <laughs> is, is there anything you don't hate or that you're not heartbroken over? I mean, I have so many blessings. I'm so grateful to God for all my blessings, but... Well, let's talk about some of them because you could pick any one of them and use it as your reason for alignment. And if you did it for a little while, for a steady enough time, then the other things would come into alignment. I have suffered terrible, terrible OCD. But you see, here we go again. 
here we no, go again. I think that that's my grateful thing. When we broke up, I got better. And so that, I mean, I was homebound the last year. At here, this we time. here we go. Here we go. Here we go. We're all halfway to China. Yeah, I know. That's why I, I'm so glad I'm up here. I'm so glad. Thank you. So here's something that is really wonderful. Your desire is strong enough that even with all this resistance around you, you still light it up. So you have as much desire as anyone who we have ever talked with. So your vortex is really pulsing in a very strong way. But we just want to say to you, you can't get to any of those things you want as long as this is what's coming out of your mouth. And it isn't that we want this to just stop coming out of your mouth. We want you to stop feeling about these things. And the only way you can stop feeling this way is you've got to stop focusing on them and keeping them active because law of attraction will just keep bringing you more and more and more and more that's why one thing just leads to another and another thing and another thing and another thing and another thing so then should I do a focus wheel <laughs> well the value of a focus wheel is to help you to focus differently but when law of attraction is yielding to you so many things that are not pleasing that a focus wheel will most likely just frustrate you it did. It did frustrate me because I, I, I was trying to do it and I wasn't getting the hang of it. So we're going to take five more minutes with you. And during these five minutes, we want to help you to soften these subjects that are bothering you. Just soften them. So relative to the relationship, that was then, this is now. I see him with a new relationship on Facebook. He posted it and it broke my heart. And it's, it's like, I can't wrap my head around it. Like, I can't. It's, it's hard. And yeah. I shouldn't. It's all right. That's what keeps going. And I have OCD, so I keep thinking of the same thing. So what you're saying to us is somebody has given you the label that you are a strong thinker. And we want to give law of attraction a label. Law of attraction responds powerfully to the thoughts you think. So... You focusing a lot on things you don't want and law of attraction then yielding more to you of what you don't want is what causes you to be a strong thinker. So the people who are labeling you OCD are not factoring in law of attraction because if they were, they would say, what happens is when you give your attention to something and you're looking really often at it, you activate a vibration within you that makes it difficult for you to think or see it in any other way. So what do you want us to say to you? You might as well just give up because you don't have discipline of thought. We don't believe that for a moment because you have a powerful enough desire that even with all this garbage that you're laying on the other end of the track, you still light it up. Your desire is still very strong. So there's not only just hope for you getting to what you want, it's a sure thing in the moment that you let go of all of this other stuff. What has made you so defensive? Why do you need to explain so much why you're not where you want to be? Because you're a human being and you've been relating to others and others are looking at you and you feel like you're the center of attention and people are looking at you and wanting to know why things aren't working out better for you. But the reason is always the same. You can't get there from here. You've got to do something different if you want something different to be your experience. And that's why it's thrilling to us that when you found the clips on YouTube and were watching them, you felt resonance with them. And the reason you felt resonance with them is because you were off the subject from moment to moment of things that were bothering you and you got tuned right in with who you are and you recognize, oh, this makes sense to me. You were feeling your power coming back. But when you then try to apply that power to something that's really bothering you, law of attraction won't yield to you. So any subject that is not working for you, you've got to get your attention off of it. And that is not an easy thing. It's not an easy thing relative to your physical body. These are the three. Your physical body, money, and love. Those are the subjects that are the most difficult for people not to notice where they are. And we want to shout at you. But you're not looking where it is. Where it is is over here where everything that you want is. And you say, no, I'm over here where it isn't. And we say, no, it's over here. Everything that you want is over here. Just feel for it a little bit. And you say, well, I'm looking for it over here and I don't see it. And we say, well, just feel Feel for it. Just feel for it a little bit. Because if you get even anywhere close to it, then you begin to get movement and your positive thoughts begin to turn to positive things. And before you know it, you've had some things breaking loose for you. There are glimpses. Yes. And then they become more and more and more and more. 